that's the one. Today I'll be breaking down some classic priest riffs, some new priest riffs, some in between, breaking them down and showing you what we do live and what the guys have been doing for 50 years that define the genre of heavy metal. And hopefully you'll be able to take away from this lesson and put it into your playing as well. So this riff is from the behemoth of a track uh, from the 1982 Screaming for Vengeance album. And it thunders in with just a killer priest riff. And I'll play it quickly for you to speed, and then I'll break it down a bit slower and so you can see what's going on. <laughs> We'll do it again and uh, I'll slow it down for you so you might be able to see a bit better what's going on. So, first of all, this song's in E standard tuning, and it's around the E position. And it bounces off of the root note. C, A, and B, around those positions. The interesting thing is, it repeats every time, apart from the last time, and the root note changes, so it's. And on the last time, just as a little ending there on the fourth and fifth frets on the D string. The part before the verse riff, that's all around E. It's an E chord on the on the seventh fret. There's open strings on that one as well, instead of and it just gives it a bit of a dissonant sound rather than playing the fretted notes. And it's also palm muted as well. So, so if you can see uh, on my right hand, it's dampening the string somewhat right near the bridge, you know, so. So instead of ringing out like that, it just makes it a bit tighter, a bit more concise, a bit more heavy metal, you know. Without it, it'll be. Which sounds pretty cool, sounds kind of Led Zeppelin, you know. That's how we do it live now. Just to recap then, I'll go back to speed and play the riff as it should be. So now we're going to take a look at Painkiller from 1990. <laughs> This is in standard tuning again, by the way, and is in the E position on the seventh fret. And the cool thing about this riff, it bounces off the low E string. So it hits the octave E on the seventh and then bounces off the open E. So. And also the cool thing about this is if you listen carefully to the record, it's almost like a pinch harmonic. So if you if you hit the string with your thumb, 
after the pick hits it, you get this kind of effect. So it's not that extreme, but it's the same effect. So when you hit each note, it has kind of a, you'll hear what I mean. So when you put that into context, it's without it, it's a subtle difference, but without it, it's this. And it only rings through every now and again when, when you get the pop right, you know. But I think it's an integral part of it. it to me, it sounded evil, you know, when I heard it as a boy. So I'll play it once more for you, slow, so you can see what's going on. Depending on where you pick the string at the picking end, it changes the harmonic that comes out. I'll show you what I mean. So So, you know, you can experiment as well when you're doing your own stuff, if you want to put that in there. Depending on where you pick it, changes the harmonic of the note, which I think is interesting. So now I'll do the second part slow, which is the breakdown. So again, it has that picking technique going on, you've got those going on, and also it's the same, almost the same phrasing as the verse riff, so it's it's the same kind of phrasing, same kind of timing. Now Glenn, I know Glenn plays this up on the B position on the, what's that, the 5 seventh fret. He plays it up here. I play it down here. Because he's playing it wrong. He doesn't know how to play it. So that's, that's basically the riff. So it's the same phrasing as the first riff, as the intro riff as well. Uh, it's just got a bit more movement to it, again, which makes it sound evil. It goes from the B to the C. Those pops really sound evil, really, really pick them out, you know, you can really dig in there. So, both of these riffs are played on the bridge pickup on the Les Paul, which gives it a bit more of a biting tone, as opposed to the neck pickup, which is a bit more rounder, a bit fatter. And I'll give you a demonstration of the main riff on both pickups, so you can see the difference. Hear the difference, even. <laughs> So again, on the bridge pickup, it sounds nice and sharp and concise and, you know, heavy metal, really. So just thought I'd point that out. Also, this riff as well, um, a lot of people down pick everything. You know, the, the, the Hetfield right hand is, is the law, you know what I mean? I never have done. I've never been um, too strict about down picking everything. Uh, and to be honest, I think if you don't, it gives it more of a swing. And I don't mean the swing in terms of the, the beat swing. I mean, uh, in terms of movement, in terms of rhythm, what I do is... Which straight away, you can hear more of a, you can hear more movement in there anyway. So I'll play both versions and then you can make your own minds up. I don't know if that sounded any different, but if it didn't, then it dispels the myth of the down picking, doesn't it, really? But if it did, hopefully you can hear the rhythm in there. The so to recap, here's both riffs 
And again, these don't come one after each other in, in the song, but I'm going to play them that way just so you can hear them both together in context. <laughs> So for the next breakdown, uh, I'm going to do Firepower from the, the new record, Firepower. It's the first track on the record in the writing sessions really led with that first riff. And it was one of the, the moments that lit up the room and in terms of riffs, you know, we, we thought that that should be the first statement riff vibe to open the record. So again, that's the power of, of a good riff, you know. Um, it's a relatively simple riff and I'll break it down for you. It's half a step down, so we're in E flat tuning and it's in the F sharp position. <laughs> Pretty uh, simple this one, um, but I'll break it down for you, I'll slow it down and show you what's going on. So, like the painkiller riff, everything's bouncing off the low root, which is the F sharp. The first chord as well is more of a two note chord rather than a four, but it varies as well, it's fairly loose. That's pretty much all there is to it, and it's one of those um, riffs that was fairly simple, uncomplicated. It just shows you that you don't need a complicated riff to be a great song or a great hook or a great vibe or, you know, a great statement. So that's basically uh, the firepower riff. Again, this is, uh, this is all on the bridge pickup uh, to give it that biting, cutting tone. And as far as picking is going, um, again, I'm not a, a huge down pick a guy, so it's the same as the painkiller riff from me. It's not all down picked, it's the, the <laughs> instead of so I'll do it again and um, I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> The down picking sounds pretty good actually, maybe I'm just lazy, I don't know, but I prefer the other way, I don't like the down picking. But to me, as I said before, it does give it more of a, ry of a rhythmic quality, you know, more of a Schenker. You know, it just gives it a bit more movement, a bit more rhythm on the guitar, so that's the way I'm doing it. So the next one I'm going to do is also from the Firepower record. Um, it's called Evil Never Dies, and I'm going to do the, the main verse riff for you, and then uh, the chorus riff, and I'll break them down and show you what's going on. This one's also in the E-flat tuning, so it's half a step down from standard tuning, and it goes like this. <laughs> Uh, that was the verse riff, the pre-chorus part, and then going into the chorus. And I'll play them slowly for you.
It's mostly down picked this one, all on the all on the bridge pickup again. There's two versions of the E chord that I play. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just there's that one, which is a bit more of a, a full E, or there's just a, a regular E chord. And the first time it does that run, it's so so the the E on the seventh fret stays there, but the the root changes. So it gives that kind of dissonant kind of evil. Sounds awful on its own, but it makes sense, I swear. The second time it plays the full chord. So, so it goes like this. Like that. Um, and it repeats that a few times. And then the pre-chorus is a G and a C. Uh, now again, I play two variants. I, I, you know, I might play, which is a standard, uh, you call them power chords over here or bar chords, one of the two. We call them bar chords in the UK and it's English, so we're sticking to that. Uh, or you can play, you know, the open chords, G and a C. And I put, um, on the third fret, it's, I use both the E and the B strings on the third fret. Purely because it's easier. I don't have to move my fingers so much, so. And then going into the chorus, it's. Or. Whichever one you prefer. I prefer the open one. Because I'm lazy. And then going into the chorus, it's all on E, on the seventh fret. Now this one's a bit more tricky. This one's a bit more, uh, it's a bit quicker. So it goes between the E, the F, and the D chords, and it, it bounces off the bottom E again, like the painkiller does, but in a different rhythm. So, so it's, there's two little notes in there. Every time there's two. It's funny, when you break down your own stuff, it's like stuff you never knew, so thank you. But, uh, the only thing that's different and doesn't do those two notes is the, the tail at the end where it goes. So um, that's basically the, those riffs. So I'll do them up to speed again, um, just to summarize, and, uh, and that's about it. So this is a uh, Hell Went For Leather. We're back in standard tuning. Um, this one's in the key of A, and it's around the fifth fret position. Which is classic. It's a wicked riff. It's great to play, fun to play. Sounds great, but it's fun. So there are three riffs from Hellbent for Leather. I'll play each of them slow for you so you can find it, you can see what's going on. And I'll try and tell you what's going on. One of the great things about Glenn, you sometimes you can't tell what's going on. It's very kind of uh, unclear or ambiguous or the phrasing or the notes that he used and uses, uh, the way that he thinks is very unorthodox. So it's a fun riff to play. There's a little half note in there which makes it fun. And there's also the picking, um, again, is very much reminiscent of later things like Painkiller and Firepower later on. So I'll go through all that with you.
So, on the main riff, you can hear those early ideas and those inflections rhythmically on the picking hand that would later on, you know, show up in Painkiller and things like that, which was the... You can see the bouncing off the bottom root note and then on the octave above it. It's all related. It's all kind of in the DNA of the band, you know, and of the way that Glenn and Ken played the guitars and came up with the riffs. And there's a, there's a note in there which is... So it's very bluesy, and that, that's Glenn again coming from Rory Gallagher and influences like that. All the, all the while bouncing off the bottom A, the open A. Um, and then the, the end of the riff is on the C on the third fret, pulls off to the open A, and then hits the uh, octave A on the second fret on the G string. So put those together. And that's it, that's, that's the main riff, and it's, it's cool as hell. One of my favorite riffs of all time, I think. Going into the, the pre-chorus, um, it's in the D position on the fifth fret. Which is a bit tricky to play. It's, a, it's quite a unique rhythm. And it basically uh, pulls off of the chord. Sometimes I finger pick it as well, again, being lazy. The run at the end is this. And the chorus riff, slow down for you, it's in A. That shape right there, so that's a G, a B, and a D, repeats itself, a string set down. So, so the last two is the F, open A, and a D. G, and then the other way, back the other way, so... I think that's right anyway, that's what I've been playing for the last 10 years, so... They haven't sacked me yet, but that, so I'll play the run again. That's basically what it is. I'll play it once more to speed, all three wrists together, and it goes like this. The next song I'm going to break down is a classic. It's a it's a song that if we didn't play, I think there'd be riots after the after the gig. It's a it's a song from British Steel in 1980, the year I was born. I mean, that's a testament to how long their career has been since then and before that as well. And this was kind of everything came together for Priest in terms of songwriting and short, sharp, concise songs. And there was some killer tracks, some killer hits on this record. So uh, I'm going to break down Living After Midnight 
Uh, it's a simple song, but it's an effective song and gets everyone singing every night when we play it all around the world. So this is Living After Midnight. <laughs> So the main riff broken down. So it's um, E, D, and A, and B. And that's it. Uh, there's a slight timing difference, it's a very, very slight one between the first phrase and the second phrase. First time we hit the A twice. So it's a slight difference, but it just gives the riff a bit more movement and, you know, when it turns around. The verse is basically chugging on the E, so it's... And off of the G. Twice like that. This one I can play down picking, it's a lot easier, so I, I get away with this one. And live also, um, I also play the low version of the E as well, maybe just to fatten it up, to thicken it up a bit, so it was, it'll be like this. So, pretty simple, but very effective. Uh, and the way they layered up the verse riff on the, on the record was really interesting. You had one going and the other one was So it gave like a, a bit more movement in there. A lot of stuff that's interesting as well, it's a lot of noises going on and rhythmic stuff in between the chords vibe and swagger, you know. Which if you didn't do it, it would be this. And I wouldn't be too um, analytical about those things either, like have fun, move around, their noises and they, they bring it alive, you know. I wouldn't kind of put too much emphasis on, oh, that noise there and that scrape or that little, you know, they're just natural things that come out from the natural rhythm of playing a riff like that. So we'll go back up to regular speed from the top and I'll play those two riffs again for you. This is Living After Midnight. <laughs> Okay, so the next song I'm going to break down for you is uh, a song from Point of Entry, and it's heading out to the highway. Point of Entry came after British Steel, and uh, it had some great tracks on it. This one, Heading Out to the Highway, Desert Plains, uh, Solar Angels, some of my favorite tracks of all time. So this is uh, Heading Out to the Highway, the main riff. <laughs>
So three riffs there. The first riff was the opening riff, the intro riff. The second riff is the verse riff. And the third riff was the chorus. Again, very simple. The verse is very simple. It's open chords around the, you know, the bar chords, power chords, whatever you want to call them. And the chorus is, I play very much open. I'll talk you through it. I'll play it slow. This is the main riff. This is the opening intro riff. <laughs> So it's all around the A position. And the, the high E and A move up to the fifth fret position. And then up again to the D position. And what, what I'm doing there on the fifth fret is on the G string, it goes from the uh, C to the B. It's doing that classic priest thing, which is bouncing off the root note. In this case, it's A. Tying up with a G, but not a full G, just the two notes. So again, always bouncing off the A. I'll play it again. Wicked riff, just wicked. Sounds great slow too, you know. So that's the main riff. The core, the uh, main verse is A, C, G, A, F, G and B, A, making sure you're paying attention. And again, I've played this two ways live. And again, they haven't, they haven't kicked me out yet, but I play, you can play those sort of chords, or I, I also play it openly like. That sort of thing. So it's a bit more open, a bit more open. So, you know, you can play whatever you feel. And the chorus is... Uh... Again, very simple chords. I'm playing that inversion of the E again, which is... But you can play just a simple E. You can play the E up here. So it's all based around E, A, D, G, I think's in there. And again, I play many different variations of this, uh, but on the record, it was very much straight, very concise, and it sounds like, you know, the, the, uh, the normal chords around that. And it's very simple, but again, very effective. And those guitar noises, it's the pickup notes and scrapes and pops, which are essential. So all that sort of stuff, never forget the guitar noises. Um, and I'll play all three riffs again for you to summarize. And uh, yeah, that's it.
again, this is all on the, the bridge pickup and most of it's down picked. There's not a lot really going on here that's complicated or needs alternate picking or anything like that. It's very much ACDC. <laughs> open, you know, let it ring out, and uh, most of it's down picked. For the next song I'm going to break down is the uh, Priest song, Another Thing Coming, from the Screaming for Vengeance record. Now this is a testament to how effective simple riffs can be. I think there's only two riffs in the song, the main part anyway, there's a breakdown and a, a bridge section. But the main riff is so simple, I heard the tracks from Screaming for Vengeance as we were doing Firepower and Tom Allen showed us the old tapes from those sessions back in the day and you could actually hear uh, the drums in the background, it was recorded so uh, primitively because they didn't know they were going for a take. They just played it. The guitars were super clean. They were on a, a Roland JC120 and it's heavier because Glenn put another heavy guitar up the middle afterwards. But there was something magical about that take that they kept it. Uh, so it's a lot simpler and a lot less heavy than you'd imagine. Uh, the guitars are a lot cleaner. There's two things going on um, in the intro. The first guitar is doing this, which is a F sharp. And the other guitar layered over the top is doing And that's it, and together, I can't do them together. So together, they sound like that, and it's such a simple thing. Down picks all the way. So that's a transition into the verse, and the verse is the same. Uh, so what that does there, so it, instead, of, instead of doing the same thing twice, it just pulls off and then the root note. So again, it's a simple change, but it's very effective. To break down the bridge section before the solo section, which is a screaming lead break, as usual, is it uses some open chords. So yeah, they're... Um, Nice and open, nice and airy. Actually ends on the D flat. And then into the... Into the lead break. But again, apart from that, it's all very much everything we've talked about before. It's simplicity with vibe and swagger and all those guitar noises that are in between every note, you know. Which puts the life in it, really. Otherwise, it would just be flat notes, flat chords. So we talk about the power of the riff all the time, and there's no better example, really, than the simplicity of another thing coming. So I'll play those riffs again, uh, the main riff and the intro and the verse riff, and I'll also put the you know, play those as well for you. Up to speed.
So I hope everyone learned something and hopefully I helped to uh, show you what goes on behind the riffs and how the riffs were created and you know the riffs that I've done with the band and some of the classic ones that we all grew up on. You can see the similarities and the, the DNA that runs through the timeline in some of those riffs, which is really important. It gives a band its character uh, and, its, and its heart, you know. And hopefully you can put those things into to your music when you're creating your own riffs. Move around and play different voicings of the riffs. Um, don't be so, so kind of locked into precision so much. Obviously it's gotta be a certain way and, and we're all perfectionist when we're writing our stuff. But when it gets to a point, if we move around and we have fun with it, the song just comes alive, the riffs comes alive. And uh, nine times out of 10, when you're writing, it's the power of the riff, not the complexity. The, the, the complexity level doesn't determine how powerful the riff is, which you'll see. So uh, I hope you have fun, uh, get a lot of enjoyment out of it. And uh, next time, maybe you can show me how to play it properly. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.